EES, which is pronounced EASE, is an acronym for Engineering Equation Solver. In previous videos, we discussed EASE functions and procedures, and these are programming constructs that contain some set of calculations that must be completed over and over. These are really convenient because you can debug them carefully one time and then use them with confidence uh, as you need them. Array variables in EASE have an integer array index that is enclosed in square brackets at the end of the variable name. And these array variables can hold multiple values like vectors, and they're discussed in section 1.7 of Mastering EASE. Arrays can be passed to functions and procedures as a, an input argument. So here, for example, uh, I've, I've written a function that calculates the sum of the squares of all the elements in an array. So the two input arguments to this function uh, are the number of elements, n, and then the array itself, which is a, and then uh, square brackets, right? And you'll note that uh, the array range notation, so square bracket 1 dot dot n, is used to indicate all of the array elements between index 1 and n are being sent to this function in this array. Within the function itself, you can see I'm using a repeat until construct here. Uh, to loop through all of the elements and sum their squares. So we can test this function. So first let's build a, a five element array that just contains the numbers one through five, which I've done here. And then we will um, use the function that we wrote to get the sum of the squares for all these entries. And this, this works fine uh, as long as I have a relatively small number of entries in the array. But there are a few potential issues uh, that arise with this code. And the first is that there is a limitation on how large uh, this array A that I'm passing to the function can be. So for example, if I change the size N from 5 to 150, you'll see that I get this error message. And the reason I get this error message has to do with how Ease uh, operates. You, you have to remember that Ease compiles all the equations at runtime in order to minimize the computational effort associated with uh, solving them. So EASE is going to start at the top of the equations window and compile each of the equations one by one. Uh, but at the time that the equations are being compiled, the value n has not been assigned. And therefore, EASE doesn't know the size of this array uh, that's being passed to the function. And without knowing the size of the array, EASE is not able to compile the equations that define the function. And therefore, it's stuck. And when this happens, uh, Ease is going to assume that the size of an, of an array passed to a function or a procedure is 100 by default. And therefore, the a uh, square bracket 1 dot dot n that appears here in the function declaration is going to be interpreted by Ease uh, when it's compiled to be a uh, square bracket 1 dot dot 100. Uh, and any value of n that's less than or equal to 100 is going to work fine when this function is called. Uh, but it's going to fail if you try to call this function with n greater than 100. So there are a few different ways that we can address this issue. Um, the most straightforward way is that we just change the default size that Ease assumes for arrays. And you would do this using the dollar default array size directive. So for example, if I add the uh, following directive to the top of the equations window, so here, dollar default array size equals 150. Now, every time it sees one of these arrays being passed to a function, it's going to assume that its size is 150 rather than 100. And so now my program is going to work fine, even up to n equals 150. Alternatively, we could just change the upper limit of the array index to be a numerical constant 150 in the function declaration itself. So here, I'm just going to change n uh, in the size in the array over here to 150. And again, now it's going to solve fine uh, so long as n is set to uh, 150 or any value less than or equal to 150. And again, this is because Ease is now going to reserve 150 elements for this array A uh, when it's uh, in the function uh, at compile time. The maximum allowable array size that can be passed to a function using this technique is 2,000 in the current implementation of Ease. We can also access array variables that exist in the main program from inside of an array or a procedure without actually passing them to the array or procedure. And you do this using the dollar common directive. So this is explained in section 14.3 of Mastering Ease. And uh, what happens is the dollar common directive, when it's placed within a function or procedure, 
provides read-only access to the variables that follow that directive. So that is, uh, when I'm inside of this function or procedure, I can read these variables, but I cannot modify their values from within the function. This method is much more efficient than passing the array to the function or procedure, uh, but it doesn't let you actually modify the array from within the function or procedure. It does require that you correctly specify the name and the size of the array variable in the dollar common directive. So here I'll just modify this function so I'm not actually passing the array to the function. I'm just going to access the array from within the function. So I'll put a dollar common at x and then 1 dot dot 150. And you'll notice x is the name of the array that it has in the main program, right? I have to match that name because that's the one I want to access from within the uh, function. So this method of passing information to a function is also not that convenient because, again, the value of n is not adjustable. So if the upper limit is set to 200 in the dollar common directive, uh, then an error message is going to be issued. Or if uh, n is, is changed to 50 in the calling program, for example, then an error message will also be issued. Right. So the above example, this, this technique is going to require that the size of the array be changed in both the main program and the function if you want to change the value. And of course, that's uh, inconvenient and probably going to lead to mistakes. So probably the best alternative to use is a, a global constant that is set to the array size. So global constants can be defined using the dollar constant directive, which is discussed in section 1.9 of Mastering Ease. Uh, constants that you define must have a hashtag as the last character in their name. So in this example, what I'm going to do now is use the global constant n hashtag, and I'll define that right up here at the top. So dollar constant n hashtag equals 150. That's going to define the size of the array. And then if I want to change the size of the array, all I have to do is change the value of this global uh, constant uh, and hashtag. And because this global constant is defined at compile time, then I'm not going to run into any issues when ease gets to the point of trying to compile this function because it will know the value of n hashtag at the time it tries to compile this function. Passing arrays as arguments to or from a function or procedure uh, itself is inefficient and inconvenient. And often the only reason that you would uh, need to pass an array out of a function or procedure is so that it can be viewed or plotted once the calculations are complete. So it's possible to display the arrays that are used in a function or procedure uh, in their own tabbed arrays table window. And the way you do this is by placing the dollar arrays on directive anywhere within the function or procedure. So here's a very simple example. We can write a function that computes the temperature of an object uh, a lumped capacitance that's initially at some initial temperature, T initial, and then the object is going to be subjected to convection and radiation with an environment at T infinity. So the surface area of the object is uh, A sub S, the total heat capacity is, is C, uh, the convection heat transfer is H bar, and we're going to assume that the emissivity is, is 1. And if you make these assumptions, then uh, the time rate of change of the object's temperature is given by this function, which you derive with just an energy balance on the object. Sigma here is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So to solve this differential equation, I could use the integral command in ease, which is discussed in chapter 7 of Mastering Ease, and that's a nice, powerful technique for solving differential equations numerically. Here we're just going to write a very simple uh, function that uses the Euler numerical integration technique to determine the temperature of the object after some specified duration of time. So the arguments to this function are the the time duration to simulate, which we're going to call duration here, uh, the heat transfer coefficient, surface area, initial temperature, ambient temperature, and the heat capacity. And we're also going to sim specify the total number of time steps to take in the simulation. So within the function then, first we'll calculate the duration of each time step, so delta t, and then we will um, set up an array uh, the temperature at the initial time, so T1 is the initial temperature, and the time at the initial time, so time 1 is 0, and our index of this array is initially 1, and then we'll just take our time steps inside of a repeat until construct. So within this construct, we're going to um, first of all calculate the time at index i plus 1 by just adding the time step, 
and then we'll use the Euler technique to compute the temperature at index i plus 1, right? So that is this very simple equation to move forward one time step. And then finally, the index is incremented, and we will terminate the loop when i is equal to n, the number of time steps. And the output of the function is the final temperature, and we can test it here with some arbitrary inputs. So 100 seconds, you can see the heat transfer coefficient and so forth. Now we're going to use five time steps, and if I solve, I get uh, this final temperature of the object. So you'll notice here that the arrays t and time are constructed inside of the function. Uh, they're used to solve the equation numerically, the ODE numer numerically, but they're never passed from the function back to E's, right? So I can't actually access those array variables in order to do things like make a plot of temperature as a function of time. If I go to the solutions window, you'll see there is a tab corresponding to the function and if I look at that tab I'll see all of these arrays variables but they're, they're not actually placed into an array where I can make a plot so if I want to make a plot of the results what I have to do is uh, put the directive dollar arrays on at the top of this function and now if I run and I get done what you're gonna see if you go to the arrays window is that <coughs> the uh, arrays associated with this function exist in their own separate tab as shown here right so I can now plot these data and um, you know do whatever I want to do with these data if I want the uh, arrays to stop showing up in this tab I can just change the dollar arrays on to dollar arrays off and it will restore the array variables back into the solution window so this is an overview of how you use array variables with functions and procedures in ease and this is one of a series of tutorials that is meant to describe the operation of the Ease software. To get more information about Ease, obtain the software, or access more of these tutorials, please go to the website fchartsoftware.com. These tutorials are excerpted from the book Mastering Ease, which can also be obtained from the FChart software website.